Hi guys, today May 30, 2020, I'll give my own personal analysis of Jollibee shares. So before we go to the technical analysis, let's discuss first what happened to their annual reports um, based on 3 year or 2017 to 2019 and our projection for 2020. So currently, um, Jollibee choking... Um, I mean the Jollibee share. I mean Jollibee company is um, comprised not just the Jollibee but also including Chow King, Greenwich, Red Ribbon, Mang Inesal, Burger King, Pole Twenty Four, and the total branches or stores here in the Philippines is three thousand two hundred thirty eight stores as of September thirty, twenty nineteen, based on their annual reports. So abroad we have the these restaurants in China, Yonghe, Hongwan, Dunkin' Donuts, of course, Jollibee, Red Ribbon, Chowking, Highlands, Po, Hard Rock Cafe, and of course, Mash Burgers. So the total branches abroad, that's 1,451. And of course, the recently acquired um, CB Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf for 350 million dollars or around 18.3 billion pesos so on that note the total worldwide stores is 5863 so now let's go on the capital expenditures or the future expansion last year 2019 they have spent 17.2 billion pesos to open 250 stores in the Philippines and 250 stores abroad and of course the two commissaries however this 2020 denounced nila from 14 billion to 5 billion dahil nga sa COVID or sa lockdown so dahil doon syempre yung 9 billion is yeah, for expansion na nila for 2021. So, on that note, possible, yeah, let's just prorate it. Anyway, um, 5 billion divided by 17.2. Actually, this is just the rough estimate of the possible stores na i-open ni Jollibee. So, times 250 last year, di ba? I mean, 500. So, on that notes, around, yeah, siguro around 146 kasi wala namang point 34 na stores. It should be whole um, stores, fully finished. So, that's around 146 possible store opening this year. So, medyo maliit siya compared sa 500, syempre, no last year. So, on that notes, yeah, let's now go on the financials. Medyo quite uh, numbers lang to. So, anyway, the key na titignan natin is, of course, the revenues. Umakyat ba yung revenues? Yeah, umakyat naman yung revenues nila. However, kung titignan mo yung gross profit rate nila or gross profit margin, ay lumiliit siya. From 18.73% 2017, 26, I mean, 2019, nasa 16.35% na lang. Same also with the operating income. Tignan mo, lumiliit siya. So, around 3.62 na lang. And on that note, net income margin, or the one the, at, that is attributable to equity, holders of the parents is bumababa din siya around 5.58%. So please note na meron pang gain from business acquisition kasi nga nag-acquire sila ni inacquire nila si CBTL si or Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. So that's actually also an extraordinary gain pa yan ha? So talagang medyo malaki yung um Dinam ni Jollibee from actually that's 500 million pesos when it terms to um, peso terms and of course the balance sheet so if you look at the balance sheet 
assets it's going up syempre because of the acquisition and the capital expenditures na inispent nila for 2019. Kaya titignan mo yung total asset is going up. Liabilities is also going up kasi syempre of course additional stores, additional um, additional come again, additional payables or I should mean additional supplies. And yeah, for the equities naman, it's yeah, um, yeah, for net is yeah, for the income and of course the sum of the translation or financial just a uh, financial translation adjustment and some yun, because of dollar to peso mga ganun. so this is just some translation adjustment lang so total liabilities and equity this is in thousands i forgot this is in thousand except eps and of course the percentages so total liabilities and equity or also the total asset is 187.28 billion pesos as of December 31, 2019. So now let's move on on the valuation. So book value, um, let's discuss first the book value. Ito yung um, price kapag, yeah, I mean, uh, before we discuss the book value is yung cash flows pala muna. So, hindi ko na siya actually nilagay dito. But, yeah. You can just um, check out from operations kasi is more on the equity holders of the parent yung net income. So, that's up. So, meron siyang positive done on that note. The current assets, umakyat. So, it's actually a deduction from the operations. And the liabilities, umakyat siya. So, it's actually a cost. I mean, a cash uh, walang kinash na out. Walang kinash out. So, it's actually a plus. Yung net difference lang ang kunin. And, of course, yung mga non-cash items like depreciation, i-add-add mo lang siya. And, yeah, for the investing part, syempre, lumaki siya because, um, this is the non-current assets. Nag lumaki siya because, syempre, yung pag-acquire ng coffee bean and tea leaf and, of course, additional um, expansion of the 250 branches and the two commissaries. So, nadagdag siya doon. So, saan nila kinuha yung pang-add nila or pinang-invest nila? Siyempre, nangutang sila. Kaya, tingnan mo, medyo lumaki yung non-current liabilities. Pero, maliit lang. And, on the, of course, on the earnings then. Oh, actually, earnings is from operations. So, on the other equity, medyo konti lang siya eh. But I think most of it are on um, translation lang. So, walang masyadong kinontribute yung equity um, equity financing. More on um, dito sa Kasi nagkaroon sila ng short-term loan, if I'm not mistaken. So, if you want to know more about the cash, cash flow, you can just check on the annual report. So, let's move on to the book value. Book value, ito yung price kapag nagsara si Jollibee na ibibigay sa'yo. So, syempre, kung katulad niya to 108.70, so, bibilhin mo siya higher sa kung sakaling magsara siya is, of course, lugi ka na dyan. Kung sakaling magsara si Jollibee kasi binili mo siya at 108.70. So, eto yung, pero kung makikita mo, yung book value niya talaga is around, kaya naglalaro lang siya around 40. So, yun. Based on our estimates, actually, the book value for 2020 is around 41. So, paano na nakuha natin yan? Paano natin nakuha? Of course, let's go to the um, projections of the earnings. Pero, let's just make it simple. Kasi, actually, pwede mong i-project tong mga to. But then again, this is very dif um, different situation kasi pandemic yan. And it's two months na more than actually 
uh, I mean, more than two months lockdown. So, yeah, it's very hard for it to anal to to make a projection. So let's just make it simple based on the, the previous year. So nagre-release na sila ng first quarter. Ah, nasa na yung ano? Wait, let's just go to the PSE edge. Nagre-release na sila ng first quarter. That's actually around 1.8 billion pesos na loss. And that equates to 1.63 na EPS net. So, negative. So, yan. Kaya ko nakuha yung, I mean, kaya ko nilagay yung 1.63. And then, since 2 months yung lockdown ng second quarter, is the times 4 ko lang siya. So, doon do may deliveries, pero tingin ko, it's greatly hit ng second quarter. So, pasalamat na din sila dyan. Kasi medyo malaki yung nilagay kong estimates. And, for the third quarter naman, is actually, paano ko ba yung kinuha? It's actually the yearly na, come again, this is 5.82 divided by 4, kaya nakuha ko yung 1.45. However, since I believe hindi niya ma marireach lahat yan this 2020, so, diniscount ko siya or binabaan ko siya by around 75%. So, 75% lang yung magi mag, I mean, around 75% lang yung magiging income niya dyan or EPS. So, and for the fourth quarter, the 1.72 is actually 5.48 less yung diluted EPS ng um. 9 months ng 2019 na 4.097. So, nakuha ko yung difference niyan is 1.72. And, of course, 7, at 75% lang yung magiging net or EPS niya for that quarter. So, overall, so, nakikita nyo naman is the EPS is actually a complete turnaround of Jollibee from net, I mean, from EPS na 5.82, magiging negative 5.87 um, EPS niya for 2020. It's actually not trailing, but it's actually our projection for the 2020. So, yeah, negative 5.77 um, for this year. So, that's really a difficult year. This is the difficult or the challenging year for Jollibee. So, book value, syempre, ito yung previous na book value plus the earnings or I mean the net loss or the net negative EPS na 5.77. So, that's around 41 yung book value ng Jollibee. So, on that note, so, yeah, let's go to the valuation. So, ang normal kasing ginagamit is the or the most normal and commonly used valuation is PER and price to book value. So, yeah, sabi ko nga yung book value, ito yung kapag nagsara yung isang company na benta lahat yung assets, na settle yung liabilities on nabayaran, eh, syempre, yun na yung mapupunta sa mga um, stockholders or common stockholders. So, as much, um, generally, dapat it should be lower, price, price to book value is lower than 1. However, may mga instances talaga na price to book value is higher than 1. So, like for example, this Jollibee, pero kung makikita nyo, yung price to book value niya is going down. So, yung trend niya, parang sinasabi, it's nag-peak na si yung growth ng Jollibee is almost peak or yeah, kasi pag nag-peak na siya is mag, mag um, babagsak siya and of course magiging stable com I mean magiging um, trade siya sta magiging stable siya I mean hindi naman sa actually stable naman siya pero yung growth niya hindi na ganun kalaki after a company had peak so yun 
ang inestimate nating price to book value is yeah, paano ko nakuha yan? It's, yeah, in-average ko actually yung the last 3 years. Kaso, I will not use the PER kasi nga negative yung earnings natin. So, I don't think it's baka wala siyang bearing kapag kinompute natin siya on that negative PE. I mean earnings. So, ang ginamit ko is of course the price to book value. So, ang book value niya kapag nag-closed, ang Jollibee, kung sakali, worst case, is 41. Tapos, currently, ang price niya ay 108.70. So, ito siya. So, ang ginawa ko, yung price to book value niya is, um, pre-neject ko na, Kung makikita nyo dito, it's actually 28% down. So, I'm ex also expecting another 20% 20, 20 down. So, kaya 80%. So, kung makikita nyo, that's 3.68 price to book value ratio. So, pag tinimes mo tong book value times eto, price to book value, makikita, makukuha mo yung possible targets at year end. Eto, 151.5. 55. Kapag yung low naman ang ginamit mo, same, actually same lang din, is diniscount ko yung last year by 20% or tinimes ko lang siya ng 80%. So, nakuha ko yung price book value around 3 pa rin. So, pag times mo yung 3 times the book value, so, ang low na ina-expect ko or target ko around 129. And of course, the high is the high wala pa kasi to eh. So, the high is the high is this price to book value na 5.25 times of course the book value. So, that's the 216.27. So, ito yung possible um, targets ko on fundamentally. So, let's now go to the chart. So, i-plot lang natin yung open, I mean, low, close, and high. So, ang in-expect natin low is 129. Let's just take out the cents. 129 lang. Take out natin yung cents. So, this is 129 and this is red. So, kasi nga, this is the low. The low. Tinik up na natin yung cents ha. Yun na natin isasama. Yung close is around 151. Closed around 151. Oh, I mean, it's already red. So, 151. Style niya is closed. Now, 2020. Possible closed. And the last one is, of course, the high, 216. So, the high na in ko is 216. Wow. Parang ang ano naman ito. 216. Where is 216? Around here. So, yan. So, yan yung possible price targets ko for Jollibee. And it's doing... Um, based on my projection, on a conservative notes, so currently doing at 108.70. So, 108.70, so at this level, is possibly um, mababa na siya. Kaso, syempre, baka yung mababa ay mas may ibababa pa. So, yung ano, yeah, i-plot din natin yung book value pala para alam natin. Book value is around 41, yung estimates natin. Huh? This is just an estimate. So, around 
41. I sorry. This is around 41. The book value estimate. Book, I mean book value projection or estimate. So, yan yung mga um, possible natin na tinitignan na numbers. I mean, prices. So, fundamentally, yan yung um, hmm, medyo malayo siya. But I think dahil nga GCQ na tayo starting June 1, it should possibly um, baka mag umakyat na siya. However, syempre, check natin yung mga indicators. Unang natin titignan is, of course, the candle. Candle-wise, usually ako ginagamit ko lang on trading sa ibang assets is the candle. So, best indicator pa talaga yung candle that's going down. So, it's pababa. So, more bearish. So, next is the Bollinger Band. So, if you look at the Bollinger Band, it's trading outside the band. And kung titignan mo base dito, medyo nagtagal siyang nag-trade outside the band. So, more on, on this, because of this, dahil dyan, ay possibly more on bearish pa ako sa kanya. Pero kapag umak medyo umakyat na siya, yeah. That's the time na I will turn bullish or pakiat na si Jollibee. So, next is, ah, dito pa rin pala, yung SAR. SAR. SAR is, um, kapag nasa taas pa siya ng candle, it means more bearish. So, yung SAR natin, more bearish. So, tatlo na siya. Tatlo na siyang bearish or pababa. Wala pang bullish. So, let's go to RSI. So, kung makikita mo naman, nag-break break down siya dito. Now, possibly, i-retest niya. Nandito na siya eh. So, possibly, ito yung i-retest niya around 21. So, on that note, syempre, it's, I'm more bearish or pababa pa siya. So, yun, puro bearish. Wait. Puro bearish pa rin yung um, signs natin or pababa. Sa MACD naman, tingnan natin. Um, yung eto, nag-cross siya eh. So, pababa. At eto, bantayan, I mean, wait sa MACD possible yung bantayan to lalo na kapag bumabagsak pa si Jollibee that's actually um, possible um, again, big to small na on the histogram possible bullish signal pero antayin natin siyang matapos pero sa ngayon ay more bearish kasi pwede pang lumakayan di pa, tsaka di pa yan, tapos yung histogram. So, next, so, tanggalin na lang natin siya. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 na. And, yeah, next is, wow, nag-breakdown din siya, OBV. Breakdown. So, on that note, saan ba yung, ano na ito, support niya? Parang layo. I know, layo. So, Ano na lang natin, um, dahil dyan, nag-breakdown siya, is more bearish tayo. Antayin natin siya na magkaroon ng support or mag-reverse mag or umakyat. So, dahil dyan, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And, of course, tingnan natin yung foreign. Tingnan mo is actually going up yung selling. So, on that note, also, I'm bearish. Kasi, nag out yung mga foreigners. One, two, kasi foreigners is actually 53% or main 54% of 
um, stock market. So, hanggat walang foreigners yan, mahihirapan siyang umakyat. So, antayin natin siya na um, wala nang selling. Ano pa ba? Did I discuss all? Ah, I mean the volume. The very important one. Kung titignan mo yung volume wise, that's actually very Tumang laki oh. Grabe. Tignan natin yung sa ano. Monthly. Para makita natin. Pero on a daily. Wow. That's. Yeah. Medyo malaki. Medyo bearish ta talaga. So yeah. On that note. Uh, volume wise. Laki ng volume going down. I mean sell off foreign sell off. So, more on bearish pa rin ako dyan. So, kung makikita nyo, all of the indicators na tinitignan ko is pointing downward. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, that's 8. 8 over 8, 100% pababa pa siya. Ay, sorry, sorry. So, let's check it here. And let's also look at the pivots. Kung saan yung possible next support niya. So, now, puntahan na natin yung possible support. So, dahil dyan, yung possible dito sa S1. Dito, yung previous. So, yung support na tinitignan natin is this S1 or the 52-week low. That's actually 91.10. 91.10. Siyempre, kung basagin pa niya yan, next is yung S, dito, yung S3 na yan. Na nakikita nyo, that's 81. Yeah. So, actually, yun lang muna. And of course, worst case is, of course, pumunta siya sa book value estimate natin na 41. Pero, yeah, tingin ko dahil sa GCQ na this Monday, coming Monday, ay possible na mag-recover na siya. Pero, syempre, watch out pa din kayo sa progress ng GCQ na yan. Kasi, baka mamaya, ay, may another wave, which is also a bearish na naman yun. So, yun. So, actually, trinade ko din siya around March. Kasi, March ako nag-start eh. Mar March 25. Trinade ko siya. However, in-expect ko kasi na um, come again, na net loss sila this first quarter, kaya nag-out ako kay Jollibee. So, yeah, ganun din yung pas kung sakali mang nakapasok kayo, and malapit na yung earnings, yeah, earnings season dapat yun yung lagi nyong bantayan. So, para mas safe is mag off muna. Or kung matapang kayo, or yeah, may alam kayong information na but I doubt na magkakaroon kayo ng information is, yeah, pwede kayong mag-buy before the earnings. But for me kasi, basta earnings, yeah, I'd rather risk off. Especially, it's um, a very challenging times. So, yun. On that note, yeah. Pa-check na lang ako kasi it's 8 over 8 na pababa. So, yeah, antayin natin siya na magkaroon ng um, bullish signal. So, for now, you can check the possible support and actually possible support muna kasi resistance na 129 medyo parang medyo malabo pa sa ngayon. But, however, yeah, just check, check, check na lang din yung um, targets natin. So, sa ngayon, actually, hindi ko pa siya trade I'd rather trade the the, was that? the IPO? Yun. 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 So actually, you can actually compare what I did to um, yeah, MM or Metromart valuations. So, nakita nyo? So, yun. So, yun lang guys. So, for Jollibee, I'm expecting more na pababa na movement. So, support 91.10 and, yeah, possible 
So, yun. Kung daily trader kayo, actually, you can also check the lower time frame. But I will not advise, lalo na sa uh, medyo maliit kasi yung volume neto. I mean, volume na whole stock market. So, makikita ninyo, actually, bumababa siya. I mean, makiat pala siya. If I'm not mistaken, it's 6.17 last. So, actually, umakyat yung daily average niya. So, so, yeah. Ingat-ingat na lang muna for Jollibee and watch out for possible supports. So, normally talaga, based on price action ako, nag 3 trade. But, for stock market, after the closed, saka ako siya papasukin. And, yeah, there you go guys. You can just check na lang here the possible support I'm looking at on ano ba to? Sa mababa, sa sakto lang, at saka sa high. And of course, on the technical note, yung possible na support and resistance. So, yeah, there you go guys. If you have some comments, questions, and feedback, please feel free to reach me out. Thanks guys!